Hey guys, welcome back to the Blimp Video Channel. My name is Craig Enders and I appreciate you tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a multiple imputation analysis in Blimp. In most cases, you can simply fit your model directly and get Bayesian parameter estimates that average over thousands and thousands of imputed data sets. But in some cases, you may want to save a few of those data sets for reanalysis in the frequentist framework. I'll show you how to do that in this video. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge the Institute of Educational Sciences for their support and point you to the project's website. You can download Blimp at the same homepage. Make sure and click the subscribe button in YouTube to get notifications when I post new videos. All right, so let's jump in. I first want to introduce you to the data set and analysis model that I'll be using throughout the video. The data are from a longitudinal education study that followed 138 students from primary to middle school. The file includes three annual assessments of broad reading achievement beginning in the first grade, seventh grade standardized achievement test scores, and a final measure of reading obtained in ninth grade. The data also contain teacher ratings of behavioral symptoms and learning problems from the first grade. The data and analysis scripts are available on the project website, along with a document that includes annotated scripts and outputs. The focal analysis is a multiple regression where ninth grade reading achievement is predicted by three continuous predictors that are measured in first grade, along with a multi-categorical risk status variable represented as a pair of dummy codes. The analysis also incorporates two auxiliary variables, second grade reading scores and a measure of standardized reading taken at the seventh grade. In previous videos, I've explained that Blimp uses Bayesian MCMC estimation. In a Bayesian analysis, the MCMC algorithm creates a filled-in data set at every iteration. The resulting parameter estimates essentially average over thousands of realizations of the missing data. Multiple imputation is a bit different because it saves a small number of those data sets for reanalysis using frequentist methods. Multiple imputation consists of three steps an imputation step, an analysis step, and a pooling step. The first step is to save a small number of imputed data sets. 20 is often a good rule of thumb. Importantly, each of the filled in data sets contains different estimates of the missing values because those imputations are based on different parameter estimates. Missing scores are imputed by drawing replacement values at random from a distribution. The center and spread of these distributions are essentially predicted scores and variance estimates from one or more regression models. Conceptually, each imputation can be viewed as a predicted score plus random noise. Sometimes these predicted values and noise terms get really complicated, but the idea of prediction plus noise is still true. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. To illustrate imputation, consider a bivariate analysis involving the broad reading test scores from first and ninth grade. Both variables have missing data. First, let's look at imputation for students who have first grade scores but no data in ninth grade. The graph shows the regression line from just one of the many MCMC iterations, and the points on that line are the predicted ninth grade reading scores. For continuous variables, Blimp defaults to sampling imputations from normal distributions. Each individual's distribution is centered at a predicted value and its spread is determined by the residual standard deviation. The figure shows the distributions of missing values for three people with different first grade reading scores. The white circles represent plausible imputations, which I jittered off the vertical line so we could see them a bit better. At each iteration, Blimp's MCMC algorithm samples a score at random from a distribution. The graph on the left shows the distribution of missing values for a student with a low first grade reading score. The orange circle is an imputation drawn at random from this distribution. Looking at the right graph, another way of thinking about this is that each imputation equals a predicted value plus a random residual or noise term. The black dot is the predicted score and the arrow represents the normally distributed residual. These graphs show the same idea for a student in the middle of the first grade reading distribution. Again, each imputation equals a predicted value plus random noise term. In this case, the random residual is negative and much smaller in magnitude. The same process applies to the remaining students. Next, let's flip the pattern around and think about students with missing data at first grade but observed data in ninth grade. Depending on how you set up the program, the distribution of missing predictor scores can be pretty complicated. Nevertheless, the same logic applies, that is each imputation equals a predicted value plus noise. So let me show you what the distributions of missing first grade scores look like. 
This graph shows the distributions of missing first grade scores for three individuals with different ninth grade reading performance. Again, the white circles represent plausible imputations, which I jitter off the horizontal lines so we can see them a bit better. The distributions of missing values now fall along horizontal slices in the scatter plot, but the idea is the same. The center and spread of the distributions are essentially predictions from a regression model. As before, Blimp's MCMC algorithm samples replacement values at random from these distributions. Now that we have a high-level view of how imputation works, let's talk about how to implement it in BLIMP. Multiple imputation is actually a big tent that includes many different procedures. BLIMP offers two ways to create imputed data sets fully conditional specification, and model-based multiple imputation. Both of these procedures use regression models, but they do so in different ways. So let's take a look at these two options. Fully conditional specification, or FCS, was developed by Steph Van Buren. People often call this the MICE algorithm, which stands for multiple imputation by chained equations. FCS uses a sequence of regression models to fill in the data, one for each incomplete variable. This figure depicts the imputation models for three variables, x, y, and z. There is no reference whatsoever to the ultimate analysis model here. Rather, every MCMC cycle uses a round-robin scheme where each incomplete variable is predicted by all others. In the leftmost graph, x is imputations are created from a regression model with y and z as predictors. In the middle graph, y's imputations are created from a model with the filled in x's and z as predictors. In the rightmost graph, z's imputations are created from a model with the filled in x's and y's as predictors. Blimp's MICE algorithm allows normal, binary, ordinal, and multi-categorical predictors. The defining feature of model-based multiple imputation is that the Bayesian analysis used to create the filled in data sets is exactly the same as the ultimate frequentist analysis. The figure depicts the imputation regression model for three variables, x, m, and y. The dashed arrow is an interaction effect where m modifies the influence of x on y. Notice that both diagrams are identical. The Bayesian analysis that creates the multiple imputations is a moderated regression, as is the frequentist analysis. In this case, the imputations are constructed to be perfectly consistent with the subsequent analysis model. This doesn't mean that imputation will create associations that don't already exist in the data. Rather, it simply means that the imputations are tailored to this one particular analysis. Blimp's model-based imputation procedure allows normal and non-normal continuous variables, as well as binary, ordinal, multi-categorical, and count metrics. Now that we've seen Blimp's modeling options, when and why would you choose one procedure over the other? There are numerous situations actually where both would be appropriate and would give equivalent answers, but there's also situations where they'll differ. Remember that the ultimate goal is to save imputed data sets and reanalyze them using frequentist inference. That means that the composition of that frequentist analysis almost always determines which procedure we should use. This flowchart is a useful way to summarize Blimp's modeling choices. Starting on the left, the first decision point is whether the frequentist analysis features any type of nonlinearity, in which case model-based imputation is the only choice. Among other things, this includes interaction effects, curvilinear effects, and random coefficients in a multi-level model. If the answer to the first question is no, then the next step depends on the variable types. If the analysis is restricted to normal, binary, ordinal, or multi-categorical variables, then either FCS or model-based imputation are fine. Finally, if the frequentist analysis involves non-normal variables, count metrics, or latent variables, then model-based imputation is the only option. One takeaway message is that you can never go wrong by building imputations around a Bayesian analysis that matches the ultimate frequentist analysis. As a quick reminder, the frequentist analysis is a linear regression with a continuous outcome, three continuous predictors, and a three-category nominal predictor. The analysis also uses second grade broad reading scores and standardized reading test scores from seventh grade as auxiliary variables. Looking at the flowchart, the analysis model does not feature nonlinear effects, and it's comprised entirely of normal and multi-categorical variables. As such, either FCS or model-based multiple imputation are appropriate. Moreover, there's no reason to expect the procedures to differ. Next, let's take a look at how to implement these two procedures in Blimp. First, take a look at the FCS command at the top. You simply list all variables that you want to include in the imputation routine after the FCS command. 
Returning to the reading example, I list the four analysis variables and the two auxiliary variables. Notice that you specify the nominal grouping variable by its name from the data, and Blimp automatically creates discrete imputations. Next, let's look at the model command for model-based imputation. The model consists of three regression equations. The first line specifies the frequentist analysis, the regression model that I will later fit to the filled-in data sets. Notice that the nominal grouping variable is listed by its name and Blimp automatically creates dummy codes where the lowest numeric code is the reference. The auxiliary variables appear as extra outcomes in the model. In the second equation, I list the two auxiliary variables to the left of the tilde and the analysis variables to the right. Blimp automatically constructs a regression model for each auxiliary variable to the left of the tilde. This is actually a syntax shortcut that creates two regression equations. Before looking at the entire Blimp script, we need to configure the MCMC algorithm. For estimands like means and coefficients, 20 datasets is a good minimum value as that recommendation tends to maximize power. MCMC is constantly updating the model parameters and missing values as it iterates. I like to specify a unique MCMC process or chain for each set of imputations. The graph on the right depicts 20 unique MCMC chains comprised of 1,000 iterations each. This process creates 20,000 filled in data sets, but only the 20 data sets from the final iteration of each chain are saved for further analysis. Let's take a look at how you specify separate MCMC chains in Blimp. Four commands are needed to configure the MCMC algorithm. First, the nimps command requests 20 data sets. Second, setting the number of chains equal to that value specifies a unique MCMC process for each data set. The burn command specifies a 2000 iteration warmup period for each chain. And finally, the iterations command requests 10,000 total iterations after the warmup period. The figure on the right is a schematic of these MCMC options. Note that the 10,000 cycles after the warmup period are aggregated across the 20 chains such that each chain iterates 500 times after the burn in period ends. The final thing we need to do is specify the format of the filled in data sets. Blimp can stack all the imputed data sets into a single long format file or it can save them to separate files with unique file names. These options cover virtually all of the major software platforms. Additionally, datasets can be saved as space delimited or comma delimited with or without variable names as the column headers. So let's take a look at how to do this. The save command specifies the format and file name for the imputed data. The stacked format shown here appends the 20 datasets to the same file, which I name imps.dat. Blimp adds an additional variable in the first column that indexes the 20 datasets. Because I'm not using a file path, the imputations are saved to the same folder as the Blimp script. This format works for most software packages, including SPSS, SAS, and R. To save the data format to a comma delimited file, you simply change the file extension to .csv as I do here. Finally, if you want variable names saved to the first row of the imputed data file, you can use the Save Variable Names keyword on the Options command to request this feature. The stacked zero format shown here is identical, but adds the original incomplete data set to the top of the file. This format is required to analyze imputations in Stata, for example. Finally, this version of the save command writes each imputed data set to a separate file. The asterisk in the file name gets replaced by an integer, which in this example ranges from 1 to 20. This format is required to analyze the imputed data in M+, for example. Blimp also creates a necessary text file containing the names of the filled in data sets. All of the remaining steps take place outside of Blimp. Virtually every major software application or platform has facilities for analyzing multiply imputed data. The software tutorials document on the project's website has annotated analysis scripts for this example. Having created the multiple imputations, we move to the second step, which is the analysis phase. Here you fit one or more models to each of the filled in data sets. Because the imputations differ across data sets, so too do the estimates and standard errors. So let's take a look at the estimates from a few of the data sets from this example. This table shows the regression coefficients from six of the 20 imputed data files. You can see that the estimates vary somewhat across data sets owing to the fact that the imputations differ. These differences are important because they represent missing data uncertainty. It would be really clunky if we had to report multiple sets of results. 
In the final pooling step, we average the estimates and standard errors into a single package that we report, just like a complete data analysis. Significance tests are then constructed from these pooled quantities. It's instructive to see how the multiple imputation estimates compare to the Bayesian analysis that we use to create the filled in data sets. The table shows the pooled regression coefficients and standard errors from FCS and model-based multiple imputation. The table also shows the Bayesian parameter estimates from the analysis that created the model-based imputations. As you can see, the estimates and measures of uncertainty are equivalent for all intents and purposes. The differences are generally very small, especially when you compare them to the size of the standard errors or posterior standard deviations. Beyond personal preference, there's essentially no reason for choosing among the three approaches. The Bayesian estimates are easier to get because they don't require the analysis and pooling phases, but you may want multiple imputations if you prefer frequentist inference. That concludes our tour of BLIMP's multiple imputation features. The software tutorials document on the project website has numerous other multiple imputation examples, both for single and multi-level analyses. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you check out future videos.